Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar today on the land acquisitions for industrial purpose. Today, presentations will be separated in two parts. The first part will be on the steps required for the acquisitions of the land. And the second part will be uh, on the overview of the legal system in Thailand, Thai court system. The first part, the first part will be done by myself, uh, Chaiwat Kirati Suti Sathorn, Councils in Corporate and Commercial Department. I am the head of the real estate practice group at Silicon Kippins, and my colleagues, uh, Kun Chan Chai Chong Satit, an associate in the Corporate and Commercial Department. The second part will be given by my colleagues in the dispute resolution department, Kun Along Kon Thong Mi and Kun Jida Pa Si Sammanshi, uh, associates in the dispute resolution department. So for the Q&A sessions, uh, we try, kindly ask you to put any questions that you may have in the Q&A box, and we will try to respond to your questions after the second part of the presentation is complete. Um, then, so let us start with the first part by our Kun Chan Chai Chong Satit on the foreign land ownership restrictions. And then after that, I will provide you with the overview of the step required for the land acquisitions. Hi everyone, I would like to first uh, introduce a basic legal concept of the immovable property in Thailand. According to, to Thai law, it has been uh, forbidden for years under the Thailand Code for foreigners, individuals or companies or juristic uh, persons to buy a whole land unless they have obtained permission from the concerned governmental agencies or authorities, uh, such as uh, the Board of Investment of Thailand, BOI, or the Industrial Estate Authority of Thailand. Uh, under the land code, a company will be regarded as a Thai company and may own land, own land in Thailand if no more than 49% of the total share issued of the company are being held by foreigners. The shareholding structures of the company must meet the legal requirements the majority of the share must be held by Thai national also. And the majority ratio of the shareholders in the company must, must be Thai as well. Uh, please note that uh, even if foreigners uh, uh, own less than 49% of the total issue share, the source of fund uh, the, that Thai, Thai shareholders are required to be disclosed to the officials and the official may investigate the transactions in accordance to the internal policies of the uh, Department of Land uh, to ensure that it is not an attempt to circumvent of the prohibitions against foreign land ownership. And such Thai shareholders are not nominee shareholders who are holding share on behalf of the foreigners. Uh, However, there are, as mentioned earlier, there are several uh, exceptions uh, that allow foreigners and foreign company, uh, that being said, a uh, company with more than uh, 51%, more than, more than half of the total issue shares told by foreigners. Uh, so there are, there are four, four le main legal structures that, that are allowed. So, for example, uh, Investment Promotion Act, which is governed by the Board of Investments, BOI, which promoted entity to permit uh, to own land uh, required for the promoted business in, in the area that, that are requests for their approval. And also Industrial Estate Authority, uh, which, which is uh, industrial operator and uh, operator of the trading for the export can can be permitted to hold land ownership in the industrial estate or export in the industrial zone. Uh, this is uh, basically uh, an, incep an incentive uh, given by the Thai government and also the Financial Institution Business Act, uh, which given to basically financial institutions that uh, wish to use premises uh, in Thailand for their commercial bank business or using it as facilities for their officers, employees, and for other approvals. 
uh, they are all required to be approved by the Bank of Thailand. And Petroleum Act BE uh, 2514, which basically uh, for business operator conducting petroleum operations. Okay, so the next will be the steps to acquire the bank in Thailand. So we have several steps that you need to know uh, before you enter into uh, the agreement or proceed with the acquisitions of the land. As you can see from the presentations, the first step would be the looking for the piece of land. So this can be done by property, property agents, uh, IAT website, if you are planning to have your locations in the industrial estate area and want to enjoy the IAT privileges as mentioned by my colleague. Or other sources, uh, you have connections in Thailand, you have known someone who want to sell the land and the factory, so you can, you can look into that piece of land. The second step will be the offer letters uh, or letter of intent to show your intentions to acquire the land. After that, it will be on the land diligence process, which normally done by the lawyers. Uh, in addition to the land diligence, uh, which are mostly on the legal side, you also need to conduct the physical conditions of the land and the buildings, uh, including the environmental due diligence or engineering due diligence. Uh, this can be done by the environmental consultants or engineering companies. Thereafter, once you have filed your land diligence uh, satisfies uh, your needs, so you need to proceed with the sale and purchase agreements uh, to put down the amount of the deposit or uh, agree on certain terms and conditions on the, on, on the acquisitions of the land. And thereafter, the relevant license and permission to own land, if you are the foreign majority owned company, you need to obtain the permission to own land from the relevant authority as mentioned earlier. And the last step would be the registration of the transfer of land with the relevant land office. So as you can see from the step, there are several steps that you require the assistance of the lawyers to, to assist you on that part. Let us see on the first part, the offer letter and letter of intent. Normally it will be, uh, the terms and conditions whereby you have paid some reservation fee, uh, fix the price of the land, and then you agree on the material terms and conditions. Of course, it will be subject to the final agreement in the sale and purchase agreement. So you need to fix on the sale and purchase agreement execution date, uh, payment terms, uh, transfer date, who will be responsible for the transfer tax and fee. And then uh, if you want to conduct land diligence or physical condition diligence, you need to be able to access to the land and obtain information from the seller. So you should specify that clause uh, and term and conditions to allow the access to the land in the offer letters. So generally what we do in land diligence, you can see in the, in the slides that we provide here, uh, Basically, uh, when we conduct uh, land diligence, we have to look into the title status of the land to basically to identify the, uh, the status of the land. So under Thai law, there are several levels of uh, hierarchy of the land documents, uh, one of which is the uh, land title deed, or we refer them to in Thai as Chen uh, which is a true title deed. Uh, issued by the local provincial office of the Thai uh, Department of Land, uh, such as such a title deed is based on the accurate survey pages and plotted in relation to the national survey grid, including the deployment of a uh, unique number marker posts set into the ground. Uh, I would like to say that the land title deed is the most uh, preferred version of the land that that uh, the investor would like to purchase because you can get the absolute ownership once it is registered under your name. Uh, and for, for the certificate of utilizations that are uh, basically uh, very similar to, to land title deed, but it's more of a processory right and they are segregated into two types, which is not so sam and not, not so sam go. So what's the difference between not so sam and not so sam? God is uh, basically the Nosa Sangor is a more recent issue document 
and it also has the master survey of the area. Um, as for the details of land, we will have to also identify the title deed numbers in order to know uh, which land uh, we are conducting the land diligence and also the land number, uh, land range number, including the area, which are uh, according to Thai land, uh, area measurements, we are, uh, they are, they are known in Lai Ngan and uh, Talangwa or Square Wa. And we also have to uh, identify the history of the ownerships, uh, the chronolog chronological orders of the on owners in order to see uh, whether there has been any, uh, any uh, issues in, rela in relation to, uh, to holding the land before, because we have to identify and to make sure that all land are being held and doing process by a rightful owners and uh, rightfully according to Thailand land code. And, uh, other than that, we also have to, uh, to inspect whether there is any legal income brands uh, being registered in the land title deed or not, uh, such as a uh, mortgage, servitude, and income branches, lease, and legal attachments. Uh, whereas mortgage, uh, it's just basically uh, uh, when it is found that the land is being mortgaged with the mortgager, which is mostly financial in institutions. And also uh, as for the easement, there are several types of easement which can be registered also, such as for the residential purposes, um, superficies and usufrax, um, which are registered for the benefits of the, a third party. And this must be taken into a great concern also when we are buying or purchasing a land because we have to know who else other than uh, seller and buyer that are involved in the transactions or involved in the land access in the futures if we uh, happen to purchase the, such land. Uh, there are also a uh, servitude, which is a type of real right, uh, which will cause the owner of that property to accept certain burden, which affect exercise of their property rights entirely, or which require them to refrain from using some of the right contained in the ownership of the land, which means that there could be some uh, neighboring area uh, or neighboring land, whereas the owner might have uh, registered servitude with the former on owner for, for the right to use passage or to use access through the land. Uh, this generally for the case where there is a landlocked land, uh, landlock piece of land, whereas there, has no, there is no access at all. Uh, as, for the, as for the lease, uh, under Thai law, a lease of immovable property for a period of more than three years must be written and registered with the competent officials. Uh, therefore, we have to identify this as well. Uh, other than that, we also have to identify the restrictions of the use of land. Uh, the, the land in Thailand, the utilizations of each land are segregated into different purposes uh, according to the zoning regulations or, or the zoning law in each area, provincial or in sub-district area. Uh, because not all piece of land that we purchased can be used for industrial purpose. Some of them are strictly for residential purpose or uh, forest area. So we have to have to identify first whether the, uh, if if you are going to purchase this piece of land, would would it be possible for you to utilize it for for industrial purpose? Uh, that being said, uh, constructing a factory or manufacturing plants. So these are the key factors that we have to uh, identify when we conduct a land land diligence. We also have to uh, we we also have to take the environment reg environmental regulations into great con concern as well because uh, according to Thai law, there are some type of buildings that are required to conduct an environmental assessment report and. And sometimes we have to comply to uh, industrial estate regulations also when we, uh, when, when we purchase a land in, in the industrial estate. 
As for the access, we also have to identify that because or else there won't be any access to the purchased land and official assess price, uh, which are determined by the Treasury Department of Thailand. And also if there is happen to be any litigation case or bankruptcy, bankruptcy case, uh, which could have the land being involved into. So we have to check that uh, precisely in order to avoid any future uh, issues arising from these registrations or legal encumbrances or any liabilities. Yes, once the land diligence has been proceeded and you are satisfied with the results of the land diligence, the next step will be entering into the sale and purchase agreement. And the terms and conditions in the sale and purchase agreement should contain the following um, uh, materials. First of all, the agreement must be made in writing, and it can be either in Thai or English or both language. But if you have both language, please ensure that you have specified the prevailing language in the agreement. If not, the Thai version will be used in the court to interpret the, the, the meanings of the terms and conditions in the agreement. And also all the terms and conditions have to be certified on the sale and purchase agreement. For example, the details of land, price of land, any adjustment of the price. If this would be included in the, uh, in the event that there will be the new official measurements of the land uh, to ensure that the, the, the land area is not changed or not adjust, and you can make a clause to adjust the price if there is any change in the, the land area. You can specify the payment terms, uh, the transfer date, uh, any obligations on the breach of the agreements and consequences, the parties to be responsible for the transfer tax and fee. Normally, if unless otherwise agree in the agreements, the transfer fee will be paid equally by both parties and the tax uh, will be paid by the, the seller. In addition to that, the seller's covenants representations and warranty have to be put on the agreement, including the buyer covenants, representation and warranty is also. The notice clause will be the clause whereby you have specified that what will be the notice method to send to the other party in case of there is any notice required under the, the, the transactions. And then the last two terms and conditions will be the governing laws and language and dispute resolutions. Uh, clauses, which will be in more details by our dispute resolution teams. As I mentioned earlier, the license and permission to all land is quite important issue for the for the company to to be legally owned uh, the lands in Thailand, especially if you are the foreign majority owned company. Uh, as earlier mentioned, if you are Thai majority owned company, the permission to own land is not required. But if the land is located in the industrial estate areas, please be reminded that you still have to acquire certain license from the IAT, for example, the license to use the land overlay business in Thailand uh, in the industrial estate must be obtained by the IAT before you can use the land and overlay business in the IAT area. If you are foreign majority owned company and the land located in industrial estate area, you can obtain the permission to own land uh, from the IAT. And that will be after you have been granted with the license to use the land operate the business in the IAT area already. If the land is located outside IAT, uh, for example, if you are located in the private industrial park, which is not owned by the IAT, uh, normally the best channel for you is to obtain the BOI. Uh, permission to own land and, and this will require the application to be submitted to the BOI and the BOI will consider and, and, and give you the permissions to own land which have to be used for the promoted business by the BOI. As for the registration of transfer of land, uh, so basically any registrations of transfer of land must be registered with the competent officials. That being said, with the officials uh, in the land office where the land is located. 
uh, under Thai law, an acquisition of land is considered to be completed once it is completely registered with the officers only. Therefore, you cannot just uh, draft a, a sell and purchase agreement and then call it for the day. Uh, it has to be fully registered with the competent officials. And as for the general process uh, of the registration of the transfer of land, it takes generally one day at the respective land office, provided that all the documents from the sellers or the buyers are complete and correct. Once the documents uh, have been reviewed by the relevant officers, uh, both buyers and the seller will be required to pay for the, uh, for the uh, transfer taxes and fees, uh, which can be jointly paid or entirely responsible by a single party as agreed between the parties. So as you can see in the slide, these are uh, the general uh, documents that are required for a, a company, regardless of being uh, a Thai or foreign company. These are all the documents that's that must, must be submitted to the uh, competent official during the, during the uh, registrations of the transfer property. And uh, in, in, in this sense, uh, not, not only uh, for the buyer side, but also for the seller side as well. As for the transfer taxes and uh, fees, which are jointly or entirely responsible by any party, uh, uh, there are, uh, for example, uh, for the transfer fee, it is the 2% uh, of the official assets price uh, and uh, withholding tax, which is a progressive rate based on the official assessment price and also specific business tax, which is 3.3% of the higher price between the official assessed price or the actual sale price, whichever is higher. Uh, but the specific business tax is only payable when the property is being sold was processed by the selling party for less than five years. Uh, as for the stamp duties, it's 0.5% of the higher price between the official assessed price and the actual sale price. If the specific business tax is payable, the stamp duties will be waived. Uh, we, we will uh, have the Q&A part in the, in the last part of our presentations. Next, we will, we will move on to the, our uh, dispute and resolution team for their presentation onward. Today, we're going to cover five issues. The first issue is the legal system in Thailand. Second issue is court system in Thailand. The third one is that recovery arbitration versus court case. The fourth one is initiation of criminal action police versus court. And the last issue is special litigation consideration. I will cover the first to the third issue. And for the fourth issue, Puna Longgam will talk about it. And the fifth issue, we will jointly talk about issue five. Let's start with the Thailand legal system. The Thailand legal system is a civil law system or court-based system. The judicial decisions are not law because they apply to an individual. However, Thailand legal system is also influenced by the Supreme, by the common law tradition. In other words, in the lower in the lower court cases, states are normally persuaded by the Supreme Court decision. However, this is no strict like no strict binding precedence. The Thai constitution recognized for court. First is the constitution court. Second is administrative court. The third one is the military court. And the fourth one is the court of justice. Today, we will specifically talk about the Court of Justice. The Court of Justice can categorize into three levels. The first one is Court of First Instance, the second one is Court of Appeals, and the final court is the Supreme Court. Thai law traditionally allow parties to appeal any Court of First Instance decision to the, to the appeal court. For the appeal proceeding, it may be made on the point of fact or law. To obtain the appeal decision, it may take approximately one year. 
The Supreme Court had the authority to grant the permission to file a case. Mr. Court viewed that the issue is important and worth a decision. The proceeding in the Supreme Court may last from a year and a half to two years approximately, or longer, depending on the court backlog. For the courts of first instance, they are categorized as the general court, the juvenile and family court, and the specialized courts. A judge of the specialized courts is appointed from a judge who has competent knowledge in the specific matters. Those courts are first, intellectual property and international trade court, the bankruptcy court, the labor court, and the tax court. Another court of first instance is the criminal court. Under Thai criminal law, an accused is innocent until proven guilty. The defendant must be given the benefit of doubt. The charges that have been brought often to the criminal court are such as the defamation, misappropriation, or submission of false documents and aggravated negligence scheme. For example, diving over the speed limit and hitting someone and causing him pain. The civil cases in connection with the criminal offense can be brought before the criminal court as well as the civil court. But in practice, it is often brought to the criminal court. For the appeal proceeding in Thailand, the appeal court may consider the cases on the document, on the documentary evidence only. The parties cannot prove new evidence and there is no trial. Other than the litigation in court, the party can use the process of negotiation, mediation by the third party or arbitration. In considering to use an arbitration or litigation, the party may consider the difference between these two proceedings. First is about the type of proceeding. Arbitration leads to a private resolution, unlike a trial in the courtroom because uh, the fact and evidence can be kept completely confidential. But to file a criminal case, you may file it with the court. Second point is how arbitrator or judge selected. Under the Arbitration Act, the party are entitled to choose their arbitrator. So the arbitrator will be someone that both sides had confidence that they will be impartial and experienced in the specific matter. For the formality, the arbitration proceedings are more flexible than the litigation in court. For example, you can select the place to conduct the hearing as well as the rules using in the case. The schedule of the case is also more flexible. Another point is the appeal proceeding. There are limited opportunity to appeal the award. The party can request the court that has jurisdiction to set aside the award under the specific condition, that is, the award will be contrary to the public policy. In this kind of case, the court will not consider on the merits of the case, but the court will consider only about the procedure of the case, whether the procedure is according to the law. About the time frame for a case, as the arbitration is more flexible than the litigation in court, so it may take less time than the court. For the cost, there are many cases in which the arbitration can become more costly because, uh, for example, the quality arbitrators can demand substantial fees that would not apply in court. Also, the institution fee of some arbitration institutes is quite costly. On the other hand, if uh, the court takes a long time to be lewd, so the party would also incur much attorney fees. So these are the advantages of the arbitration that the party may consider. First is the impartiality and expertise, and it is a private process. The arbitration is also flexible and faster and less complicated as uh, the normal rules of the evidence used in court may not 
be strictly applied in the arbitration proceeding. So it is much easier to admit evidence. Okay. Next, uh, there are two types of the arbitration in Thailand. The first type is the ad hoc arbitration. This is uh, the form of arbitration where the parties and the arbitrator independently determine the procedure without an involvement of the institute. For example, the parties are free to determine all aspects of the arbitration, including the number of arbitrators, their qualifications, and how they have to be appointed, the law applicable to the proceeding, and the matter in the dispute. This kind of arbitration may be less expensive than the institutional, as it may save costs related to the administrative staff of the arbitral institute. The second type of arbitration in Thailand is the institutional arbitration. This type is a, a type of arbitration proceeding which is administered by the arbitral institution. The famous institution in Thailand are such as the, Thai, the Thailand Arbitration Center or THAC and the Thai Arbitration Institute or TAI. The benefits of this kind of proceeding is that the institute could provide you an experienced administrative staff. Due to this experienced staff, the institute could support and guide the parties through the proceeding. So it can prevent possible proceeding mistakes. Okay, and to resolve the dispute by the arbitration proceedings, the party has to mutually agree with the arbitration clause. The arbitration clause can be made as a separate agreement or included in the main contract. Today, we have a model clause to show you. As you can see in the slide, in the yellow font, the arbitration clause should state as follows. The arbitration clause must contain key sentences as you can see in the yellow font, which are first the applicable arbitration rules, and the second part is the arbitration institute. Okay, for the criminal offenses, Kun Along Don will talk about it. <coughs> okay, thank you very much, Kun Jidapa. Now let's talk about criminal action in Thailand. Uh, there are two types of criminal offense in Thailand, compatible offense and non-compatible offense. A compatible offense means a criminal offense that can be officially settled. This type of offense includes misappropriation, fraud, and defamation. Once the party settles the case, for example, the offender pays compensation to the injured person. The injured person's right to pursue the case is extinguished meaning that his life is gone. A non-compatible offense, also called a public offense, means a criminal offense with uh, the state is the injured person. So it cannot be officially settled. Example of, uh, of this type of offense include forging document, theft, and murder. Slide, please. In Thailand, there are two ways into it. Uh, initiate the criminal action. First is to report or file a criminal complaint with the police and to file a criminal case directly with the court. Next slide, please. So let's take a look at the first option, which is to report or file a complaint with the police. For this way, a criminal action starts when an injured person reports or file a complaint with the police. Then the police will conduct an investigation in which the police will uh, interview the witnesses and collect evidence. Once the police complete the, investi the, the investigation, the police will issue an opinion whether to prosecute the offender and send the investigation file to the public prosecutor. At the public prosecutor state, the public prosecutor uh, will consider the police investigation file and their opinion. The prosecutor has the power to instruct the police to investigate further if he thinks that he needs more evidence for prosecution. 
if the prosecutor agree with the police prosecution opinion, he will issue a prosecution order and prosecute the offender with the court. If he disagrees, the prosecutor will issue a non-prosecution order. Next slide, please. Okay. For initiating a criminal action by filing a case with the court, two main procedures will be involved, preliminary examination and trial. The purpose of the preliminary examination is for the court to consider whether the case has sufficient ground to proceed to trial. For the preliminary examination, the court will schedule one hearing or more for the plaintiff to present his witnesses. The defendant cannot present his witnesses at this stage, but can appoint a lawyer to court examine the, lawyer, uh, the witnesses presented by the plaintiff. The defendant can also submit a statement explaining the fact and legal issue for the court consideration. If the court considers that the case has sufficient grounds, the court would accept the case and would proceed to full trial. If the court concludes that the case does not have grounds, the court would dismiss the case. Next slide, please. Now, this slide shows comparison between filing the criminal case with the police and with the court. The blue font indicates advantages, while the red font refers to disadvantages. As you can see, the police channel would be more beneficial for collecting evidence and incurring lower legal costs. In addition, the police can request the court to issue an arrest warrant if the offender does not comply with the police summons uh, to call him for interview. However, the con for this channel would be that the case may take more time and only the police would have the control over the case. Going to the court directly would take less time. The plaintiff would have control over the case, the case for determining the witnesses and evidence to be presented to the court. However, the plaintiff may have less access to evidence and may have to incur higher costs compared to using the police channel. For this option, the court would issue an arrest warrant only after the court accepts the case for trial. Um, that's all for criminal action. Now we will talk about special litigation concern in Thailand. Over to you, Kunjida Pa. I will talk about the special consideration related to real estate. The first consideration is about the governing law in sale and purchase agreement. For the validity of the contracts, documents, or other juristic acts relating to the immovable property, the party should use the law of the country that the, the property is located. It is also for ease of the process with the competent official. Therefore, if you purchase an immovable property in Thailand, you should use the law of Thailand as the governing law. Thai law requires the purchase of an immovable property that must comply with the certain formalities. For instance, the sale and purchase of the immovable property contract has to be made in writing and registered with the appropriate authority. Otherwise, it is void according to the civil and commercial code. For example, if you buy a land, the contract must be registered with the land officer. Another consideration is this a freedom of the parties to agree to resolve the dispute by the arbitration under the Arbitration Act. The key point to considering whether to use the arbitration or litigation is uh, the arbitration can be recognized and enforced in the foreign countries in which join the New York Convention. While a judgment creditor can only execute against the property of the debtor in Thailand, the arbitral award creditor can execute against the debtor property in the country that uh, the award has been recognized. An arbitration proceeding effectively resolves the dispute of the sale and purchase of immovable property in Thailand, such as the dispute arising from the SPA of the condominium. 
So the Habitation Institute in Thailand, such as TAI, THSE, is uh, familiar with the dispute list the disputes arising from the SBA of the real estate. In case that you would like to conduct the proceeding in English, you may choose the arbitration process. Given that the parties can choose the arbitrator who is fluent in English and has expertise in the real estate area. Okay. And other than the litigation in court, if the dispute has been brought before the court, the mediation is also uh, a good option for you as it may take less time than the litigation in court. The parties can request the court to issue the judgment based on the settlement agreement following the terms and conditions that the party has agreed in the mediation. Besides, the court, will, the court fee will be exempted if the mediation in court is successful. For the next consideration, Kunalong Gon will talk about it. Okay, now let's talk about how to enforce uh, an SPA in case of breach. In case that the seller breaches the SPA, for example, the seller fails to register the property transfer as agreed, the buyer would have to file a civil claim for breach of the SPA against the seller. In the complaint, the plaintiff or the buyer should request the court to order that if the defendant or the seller does not agree to register the property transfer, the plaintiff would be entitled to use the court judgment instead of the defendant's intent to register the transfer. This means that if the court issues a judgment in favor of the plaintiff and the defendant does not comply, the plaintiff could use the judgment to register the transfer with the land officer. The Thai Supreme Court has issued a final judgment in line of this conclusion in a number of other cases. Next slide, please. Uh, some other special trip that we would like to talk about is, uh, the first one is a POA or power of attorney. High law requires that a power of attorney produced in a foreign country must be notarized by a notary public and authenticated by a Thai consulate in that foreign country. The notarization may not take much time, but the authentication normally takes time. In some cases, to save time, we submit a copy of the POA which has been notarized and request the court that we will submit the original of the completely notarized and authenticated version. Later, one is become available. Note that it is important to have the complete POA for litigation in Thailand because the defendant in a civil claim can accrue that the incomplete POA is defective and that that may affect the plaintiff entitlement to file the claim, which may cause the court to dismiss the case. The other uh, trip that we would like to talk about is counter chart. In Thailand, when an injured person file a criminal case against someone either with the police or with the court. It is common tactic that the, the opposing party file a counter criminal charge against that injured person. The counter charge can be reporting false information to the police or filing a false charge with the court. This is to gain leverage or put pressure on the injured person to negotiate. However, the success of the counter charge would depend on evidence. So, it is very important to note that when filing a criminal complaint, the injured person must state or explain only the facts. He should not add his comments or state any false information in the complaint. Uh, the last tip is prescription period or in Western term, statute of limitation. Under Thai law, the prescription period varies depending on the case types. For instance, a civil case for breach of an SPA has 10 year prescription period from the date of the breach. A civil law, a civil wrongful act claim has one year prescription period. For compatible criminal offenses such as uh, fraud, the injured person must file a criminal complaint within three months from the date that he knows of the offense and the offender. 
why the murder offense, the public offense, the punishment period is longer and is 20 years. Uh, we have come to an end. We hope our presentation will be helpful. Now it's time for the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you. So as mentioned earlier that uh, we are going to uh, to provide answers for the for the Q questions submitted in the Q and A box uh, during the end of our presentations. If you have any questions, please feel free to submit it in the Q and A box. Um, as for the first question, uh, the company under BOI can own land, but is there any restrictions for the ways these company can deal in the land? Uh, Generally, the the land the land that are being permitted by uh, basically a company that are being promoted by BOI, they will have uh, several incentive, including tax and non tax incentive. Uh, and for as for the non non tax incentive, it will be the permission to own land, which must be uh, applied with the with the. BOI for approval, and we have to stipulate uh, to request by providing information regarding the land and the plan utilizations of the land as well. So, so it can be strictly only to the, the extent of what we request for and what the BOI approves. Uh, and, and we will have uh, the, uh, the answering some of the questions first and then followed by properties questions, property related questions. Let me add, add to Kun Chan Chai answers to the first question from the BOI. So uh, when you ask whether there is any restriction on that, so I would believe that you mean uh, whether the, the land that planted with the privilege under BOI can be used for other purpose or not. So the answer would be, yes, you can use it for other purpose, but it will be limited to only up to 10% of the total land area planted by the BOI. In addition to that, you can also provide the lands for the affiliated company to use it, and it has been limited to 10% or so. So at the time that you apply for the BOI, you need to specify the, the utilizations of the land that you will use under the BOI, and then BOI will consider on case-by-case -case basis whether they will allow you to use for such specific purpose or not. Thank you. For the question about the dispute solution, first question is which arbitration institute is preferable between the TAI and THAC? Uh, I personal I personally feel that uh, both institute uh, has experience soft to uh, to proceed the arbitration proceeding, but the difference between these two institutes is uh, THAC is a uh, quite a little bit more costly than the TAI. Uh, based on my experience, uh, in, com in comparison between the THAC and TAI, for example, the estimated cost uh, for the came amount is about 50 million. The, the arbitral institute fee would be 400,000 baht for THAC. In compared to TAI, it would be approximately about 150,000 to 200,000 baht. So I think these two institutes is good. Both are good, but uh, it will depends on uh, the cost that uh, the THAC will be a little bit more costly. And another point is uh, THAC located in the office building while the TAI located in the criminal court. So uh, this is an important issue for some client that uh, they would not want to go uh, to proceed the application in court. So you would, uh, you would choose the THAC instead. Kunalongkorn, uh, do you have any opinion about this? Uh, no, that, that has covered everything, and I agree. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. And I will hand the state back to you, William. Next question would be uh, how one can check that the piece of land is approved by BOI for right to own the land. So I have Kun Chai Wat to answer for these questions. Yes, thank you. So for the uh, land that has been planted with the permissions to own land by the BOI at the time that the company is, uh, which is planted with the BOI privilege, uh, register the transfer of the land into the company, the BOI. <coughs> Uh, permissions letter number will be specified or recorded in the land files. So if you want to check whether this piece of land has been granted with the BOI permissions or IAT permissions, you can see it from, from the land files that recorded with the, with the land office. For the next question about the display resolution, there is a question uh, what is the limited limitation period for normal commercial claims in Thailand? This question, Kuno Long Gon will answer it. Thank you, Kun Jidapa. So, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, so under Thai law, patient period are quite early, but for the commercial transaction claim, uh, such as the sale and purchase, if is the claim for enforcing the contract is 10 years. But if it's about uh, claiming about the, uh, the price that uh, the, the seller uh, claim against the buyer is two years. And also about the high of work, for example, uh, someone hired the contractor to, uh, to, build, to build the building, then the, the, the hiler uh, does not pay the contractor can file the claim within uh, for, for, for the fee, for the uh, service fee within two years. But if it's about the compensation incurred from the building construction, the question period would be 10 years. Yep. Next question would be, uh... Land land ownership. Uh, what happened if BOI promotions condition eventually can not be met? If there is there an opportunity to renegotiate the conditions with BOI or seek fresh approvals for the land ownership? I think for this question, says it really depends whether you uh, BOI promotion has been revoked or not, if not, so the company still has the right to own the land. But if you see that any uh, event, the company is likely to be in violations of the BOI conditions and cannot be met, I would suggest that you immediately contact with the BOI to find the solutions. And in the questions about the seed fresh approval of the land ownership, I would think that it will be very difficult for the BOI to consider that unless you can fix the, 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 the issues with the BOI at, 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 at the immediate time. And if the BOI allow you to fix that issues without revoking the BOI promotion, so the life to own the land granted by the BOI can still be uh, alive and then, and then you can still have the right to, to, to own the land under the BOI permission. For the next question, uh, in what circumstances or when the official will investigate the holding of land by a foreign company? Okay, so for these questions, uh, as uh, Kun Chan Chai earlier mentioned in the presentations, normally at the time of the transfer of the land into the company, if the officials, um, the investigations normally happens only when you have Thai majority owned company and it's involved with the foreigners, whereby foreigners is a shareholders or directors in the company. Even though the, the, the foreign shareholding structure is not uh, more than 49%. But in case that there is any foreigners uh, holding the directorship positions or shareholders positions in the company, the official has the right to investigate in the in the source of fund of the Thai shareholder to ensure that the Thai shareholder is 
จีวีอินดิเวสเตอร์พาร์ทเนอร์อินเดอะคอมเพนีแอนด์นอตนอมินีแชร์โฮเดอร์สโซอินซัมมารีโซอินเดอะอีเวนต์แต่ยูอินโบว์ปีเดอะฟอร์เนอร์แอสเซดเดเรคเตอร์สออร์แชร์โฮเดอร์สเดอะออฟฟิเชียลแฮสต์เดอะไรท์ทูอินเวสติเกตเดอะเดอะเดอะแชร์โฮดิ้งสัจเจนเดอะซอร์สฟันออฟเดอะคอมเพนีบัตแต่วิลล์นอตบีแฮปเพนอีฟยูอาร์โฟร์เอ็นเมเจอร์เรตี้โอนคอมเพนีแอนด์เดนยูเก็ตเดอะเพอร์มิชชั่นฟอร์มเดอะบีโอไอแอนด์ไอเอชีเอ่อแต่วิลล์บีมอร์เอ่อนอร์มัลโปรเซสแอนด์แต่วิลล์บีโนอินเวสติเกชั่นส์ออนออนเดอะแชร์โฮดิ้งสัจเจอ I would also like to add on a bit on the because there are some juristic persons or company that avoid compliance with the law by uh, purchasing land while they are not foreign juristic persons, but later increase their capital to ex to the extent that they become a foreign juristic persons. Uh, so according to Department of Land, they have their internal guidelines uh, since two thousand two thousand and six. That by June of every year, the Bangkok Land Office and the Provincial Land Office must submit the name of the juristic person with foreign shareholders or directors, uh, with the exceptions of uh, such juristic person which are authorized to acquire land according to other law or not. Uh, to the Business Data Service Office uh, for the investigation into whether or not uh, these juristic person have changed their national status. From Thai to foreigners or not, and if so, if it is found that uh, a juristic person has become a foreign juristic person, they will be compelled to dispose the land uh, in, in its entirety. Next question would be what what would be better for investor between the right to own land under BOI and IEAT? k u n c h a i w a t As I mentioned earlier, uh, if the land is located in the industrial estate area governed by the IAT, uh, normally in our experience, the permissions uh, by the IAT would be straightforward process, and and most of our clients uh, they will apply the permissions from the IAT more easily, and it take less time consuming than the BOI process. So, if the land is located in the industrial estate area governed by the IAT, The IAT permission would be the better option for for the company. But again, if you think that you would like to enjoy some privilege under the BOI, so you can choose the BOI channel also. But yeah, as I said, from our experience, most of our clients they obtain the permission from the IAT. That's all for it. Uh, there's one more question. Uh... Is there any central online database that we can conduct litigation search for? So, uh, in in Thailand, we we do not have the central online database that we can use to conduct the litigation search. We still have to travel to our uh, other respective court with the jurisdiction jurisdictions to. Uh, To to conduct the litigation search on the targeted names. One more question for the dispute resolution part. Okay. And the last one would be the one in the chat box. The question about the dispute resolution is that in case that an opposing party collapses with the land office office. With the land office official, how would a lawyer recommend the client to deal with this circumstance? Uh, this part, Kun yeah. Alongon can take yeah. the answer. Let me let me let me uh, let me answer. So, I think what the uh, the client should do just to collect the evidence and um, try not to uh, proceed further with the transaction. And then, uh, once it's involved, the uh, uh, government officer that corrupt, we can go to the uh, NACC National Anti-Corruption Commission, and then that's a criminal uh, offense under Thai law. And the opposing party, who is the private person, could be the joint uh, accomplice or the supporter, which is also a subject to criminal liability as well. Uh, the the last questions would be the uh, uh, we have one more one more questions 
in the chat box. Uh, normally, when should we do the legal DD? Do we need uh, any document from the landlord? Generally, uh, we 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 have to conduct the land diligence prior to uh, entering into any chat purchase agreement, which is the most uh, preferred state, because uh, we it would be best for the buyer to know first whether the land is uh, eligible to be purchased or not, or whether or not there is any liabilities afterward if, uh, if it will be purchased. So uh, land diligence will, will serve as a documentation to certify at least or to notify the buyer of basic information prior to purchasing the land and to use it as a consideration for uh for settle into an agreement um maybe kun chawad would want to add on to this yes in regard with the documents required so normally we would require the land entities as land office uh to conduct title search in thailand we need to know the land title number we cannot search it from the from the name of the owners unless you are the, the plaintiff or, or interested party in the court judgment that you can search from the, the land owner name so what we need for the land diligence normally is will be the copy of the land title deed uh, construction permits uh, if there is any building construct there on uh, the, loca the locations map of the lands and and the contact details of the seller that would be the normal basic information that we require from the landlord yeah I think we saw uh, two more questions in the Q&A box. That would be the last two questions uh, for today. So the first one would be, can a BOI promoted company pledge the land owned by them to the bank? The answer would be yes, but you need the permission from the BOI before you proceed with the mortgage of the land to the bank. Uh, so please ensure that you have obtained a BOI permission before you, 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 you pledge the land or mortgage the land to the bank. The, the last question for today will be, could we know beforehand from which criteria the officer would consider in determining nominee status of the title holder to access the list? Uh, generally, by internal uh, guidance of the land office, they will have one form uh, that the office chair will use. It, it will be the questions whereby they ask about the, the occupations of the title holders, where is the title holder source of income, whether they have enough sufficient fund to invest in the company if you are Thai majority owned company is 51% owned by Thai shareholder so they need to see where that sort of fund of the Thai shareholder to use for the fund invest in the company so there will be other criteria that they would they they would check up on the registration of the transfer normally what in our experience, before you proceed with the legislation of the transfer of the land, uh, all corporate documents of the buyer should be reviewed by the land office first. And if they see that your company would be subject to the investigation, normally the officer would tell you beforehand and they would request the, the additional document and supporting documents to, to satisfy their, their question. So that, that, that would be my answer to that. So I think uh, it's time for today. And thank you very much for all to join our webinar today. If you have any additional questions or you require any additional assistance, uh, please feel free to contact our firm or our speaker today. Uh, after this, our marketing team will send you with the survey uh, of the, these presentations and also send you the PowerPoint uh, presentations for your record and for your reference. Thank you very much and hope to see you at the next webinar of Tilkin Kibins. Thank you, Kha.